Have you ever gotten your fingers stuck together while using glue? Well, today we're sticking it to the clues, literally. And no, this isn't some kind of Illuminati symbol. I've stuck my fingers together. In the world of forensic science, fingerprints are one of the most important types of evidence that we look for. Fingerprints can lead to identifying a victim or a suspect, and fingerprints can be left on a variety of surfaces. So we have different applications to develop those types of fingerprints based off of the surface. One of the most common chemical applications that we utilize is something that you have in your home, super glue. You see, superglue contains a component called cyanoacrylate, and cyanoacrylate is a monomer that polymerizes when it is put into a gaseous state. It adheres to the moisture content of fingerprints. This develops the fingerprints on certain types of surfaces. We do this a lot on hard, non-pore surfaces like guns or plastic bags or a variety of other different types of surfaces. This is kind of a staple in our workflow. So today, we're gonna look at how you do it. And I'm gonna show you how you take super glue and develop fingerprints. You see that? Weird, huh? It's not weird, it's very simple. What happens is the fumes from the super glue attaches itself to the acid from the fingerprints. See, this old street cop trick hasn't filtered down to you boys down in Beverly Hills yet though. Now all we have to do is match it. So as Axel points out, we can use pretty basic supplies to be able to do this process, right? Um, I first started playing with the concept just as Axel Foley does with a fish tank when I was about 13 years old. Now, on this note, I do need to put a disclaimer. Some of the byproducts of turning super glue into gas are incredibly toxic. So it's, make sure that you do it with an adult, um, under adult supervision, and in a very well ventilated area, understanding that this can be toxic. All right, so what kind of supplies do we need? Well, we need gloves. We need some kind of item that we are going to process for fingerprints. We need, we need something to put our super glue in. These are little tin boats um, that are specifically uh, made for a variety of different things. But in forensic sciences, we use them to uh, take our super glue and drop it into the little tin boat so that it heats up. Funny enough, I was actually recently at Johnson Space Center and they had these exact same things um, that they were putting moon samples in. Um, so that's kind of cool. I use the same kind of tin boats that NASA uses. Um, and then we're gonna need a hot plate. So this plugs in, it's kind of, you might see it as a coffee warmer, um, but this heats up and so you have your tin boat on top of it, it's gonna heat up and it's gonna turn that liquid super glue into a gas but we're missing a component, right? We're also gonna need a portable super glue tank. So I've had this one for several years. It's pretty neat. And uh, with the magic of editing, we're gonna fast forward while I put it together. Thanks. And boom, there you have it. Portable super glue tank. All right, now let's put everything else in it. All right, so we've got our tank, we've got our hot plate and our boat in there. Uh, we need some super glue, got our super glue, and then we have our evidence that we are going to uh, process looking for fingerprints on this. Uh, National Forensics Academy Cup. So a few key things that are important to this process, right, is one, how much super glue um, are we gonna put onto the boat? And I typically do somewhere between the size of a nickel to a quarter, depending on the volume size of my tank. So for something like this, I'll probably go a little bit smaller. Um, the tanks that I use in my um, normal laboratory or my professional laboratory um, is much bigger. So we put a little bit more. Ventilation is incredibly important both ways. One, while we're actually processing the evidence, we wanna make sure that this is completely sealed so that the 
super glue fumes, uh, those vapors can't, that gas can't get out of the tank because we want that gas and those gas molecules to actually adhere to the moisture content of, that of those fingerprints. So it's important that it can't escape. Um, so having good sealant is important. But then when we're done, we need to open this and let it vent, right? And we want to do it in a safe manner. So being in an area that is well ventilated, such as outside or under a laboratory fume hood is incredibly important. We're here in the lab, we have good ventilation, um, so we are good to go. All right, so we're gonna put our evidence inside the tank, all in the name of science. And then we are going to take our super glue and we are going to put a few liquid drops into the tin. Cool. God, that smells. Smells like super glue. Try not to stick my gloves together. Then we're gonna seal the tank. Then I'm gonna flip the switch to turn that hot plate on. So, how long does this process take? Well, it depends on a few factors. One, the size of your super glue tank. Um, this one's a relatively small one. The one I use at my normal daytime laboratory job is much bigger. Um, how much super glue you're using and the type of evidence that you're using. Typically, on average though, somewhere between 15 to 20 minutes um, and then uh, you want to let it um, vent, uh, so when you crack it open, start letting those fumes go out and step away from the super glue tank while that's happening, let that kind of air out for about 10 minutes. And now, we wait. Cyanoacrylate is a monomer that polymerizes rapidly in the presence of moisture, a process that is catalyzed by the water molecules. This means that when the vaporized cyanoacrylate comes into contact with the moisture present in fingerprint residues, this polymerization occurs preferentially along the ridges of the fingerprint because these areas contain higher concentrations of moisture and other compounds left behind from the finger's contact. As a result, the polymer forms precisely where the fingerprint ridges are, creating a white or clear solid replica of the fingerprint pattern. This adherence to the moisture and organic compounds of the print allows forensic investigators to see a fingerprint that would otherwise be invisible, and this can be crucial in forensic investigations. So what do we do after we've developed it? Well, if we need to enhance that contrast, we can dye stain it with some fluorescent dyes, or we can apply normal black powder to it, um, because it is uh, polymerized, it's hard. So we can do multiple different processes to give us the best contrast, the best visualization of that fingerprint. So that's kind of it. And we should be close to uh, the baking being done. I kind of feel like we've got an easy bake oven going on. So bing is all we're waiting for. Ah, there we go. So let's open this up and vent it. Bend it, let's bend out the top. Whoops. Oh, there we go. And we're gonna step away and let that vent for a minute. Or 10. All right, so all the fumes have vented out. Let's see what we have developed. All right, so how'd it work? Well, I see some great fingerprints. Look at that. Look at up close. But those are definitely great fingerprints developed by home super glue. So that's how we use a normal, ordinary chemical like super glue and turn it into something extraordinary um, and develop fingerprints on all kinds of surfaces. kind of like the MacGyver of uh, forensic science. If you found today's video interesting, please let Bonesworth and I know by hitting that like button and consider subscribing to the channel. We have a lot more content like how crabs eat dead bodies or uh, the investigation of exploding cars. Um, some cool stuff. 
So uh, be sure to follow us on Facebook and Instagram at The Science Detective. And until next time, I'm Detective Zach. That's Bonesworth. Stay curious. Seriously though, do this only under adult supervision, responsible adult supervision. Um, this is toxic stuff, so you gotta wear gloves, you gotta wear a mask, you gotta have goggles on. I don't want you super gluing your eyelids shut. Well, apparently according to our lawyers, I'm just kidding, don't try this at home. <laughs>